here's a little bit of Green Street. So you can see, we're almost at the corner of Green and Right, and we're five, five minutes away from class right now. It's cold. So synergy is by grouping things together. We can even think of it as muscles, right? If I activate my biceps for a movement, what am I going to do with my triceps, most likely? Yeah, deactivate it, inhibit it, right? Now what happens if I contract them at the same time? I flex. Nothing. Thank you, Kate. It's actually me flexing, but it might look like nothing. But it is actual. Or, you know, in a couple months, I'll be holding a baby. So I'm gonna to have to use my other hand I don't have the baby in to scratch my nose, right? Or my hand might be dirty, because I have a baby. So maybe I'll use my shoulder, right? I didn't say, the instructions were not touch your nose with your finger, right? Did I say that? Did I screw up and say that? No, I said touch your nose. You very well could have done this. Well, maybe I couldn't. You guys are a little bit more flexible. Good, that was a little pathetic. I'm a little bit embarrassed. Um, the good thing is caught on camera too, thank you. Um, so, you know, you could have used your knee. Right? Some of you. That was an example of a physiological constraint, by the way. Um, so we have all these multiple solutions. And the idea, back to the joint space, right? To control our fingertip, right? Because what should we all use for our nose? We have 90 or 7 degrees of freedom of joint space right. to figure that out. And the idea of this problem is, is we have all these variable solutions to pick from. How does our brain, how does our motor system, our neuromotor system, select them? Right? It's like when you go to Starbucks. And you go to order a coffee. I know this isn't a motor example, but it fits. You go to order a coffee. You have so many selections, right? And all I want is a small black coffee. I don't know the language. I don't know what I'm ordering. And there's so many variations I can get, right? How do you make that choice of what, what drink you want? Right? It's the same thing, right? You have to have some way to solve it. So how do we solve it? How do we solve ordering coffee? How do we solve a movement? And you guys all did this very well. You know, like if I was grading you on your ability to touch your nose, A's throughout the day. How does our brain do that, though? What's, how do we make that selection, right? Let's say we have a million choices, right? Or we're controlling individual motor units, right? Scott brought up muscle fibers or motor units. We have those individual muscles, muscle fibers to select. Does it make sense to you guys, logically, that we have 30,000 motor units to control, in, let's say, our upper arm, our arm? I'm sending individual commands from our brain, my brain to do that. Does that make sense to you? I'm going to send down 30,000 commands. Doesn't make any sense at all, right? Like just, do you guys think I control my arm by individual joint spaces? No, no, do you, does that make sense? Like, if I want to scratch my nose, I have to coordinate where my wrist is in space, where my fingertip is, where my elbow is, where my shoulder is. And then also where my nose is, by the way. They leave that out of the problem. But my nose doesn't always have to be in the same place. I can't move it. Right? So the degree of freedom problem is having this wide array of choices to make a mo movement selection, to solve a motor problem, and being able to solve it. How do we do that? And that's a problem. This degrees of freedom problem is a problem that motor control has struggled with or dealt with since 19... Anyone, anybody watch Ordinary Family? The TV show, it's about the family has superpowers. Okay, I don't want to make the example. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? No one wants to admit it. You don't want to be like, just like shrug one shoulder. So then you don't tell the class that you did it. All right, well, there's a, one of the superpowers, he's like super genius, and he calculates like trajectories all the time. And so do you think I'd sit here and go, okay, that light switch is approximately three meters away. It's about mm, you know, a meter and a half off the ground. I calculate my initial velocity as I walk over there. I calculate my arm distance and I know what to do, and then I flip the switch. Obviously, I didn't calculate very well because I hit the wrong switch. Right? But how do I do the movement? Right? How do I pick that up? What do these guys say? What does what does Turby say? What does Rosenbaum say? I gave you guys like fifty papers, fifty pages to read. Talk about synergies. Synergies. <clears throat> these guys are in love with synergies. Okay. What does synergy mean? Right, so everyone write down a notebook, synergies. Solutions to degrees of freedom, synergies. Thank you, sir. So what are synergies? Interactions. Interactions. I love it when you guys answer with these 
just with the text, and I don't feel like it does enough. But you're right, that's what Rosenbaum says. Yeah. It is an interaction. Okay. So synergies are interactions. Gabby, what does that mean? It's, um, <clears throat> like an example like a, like muscle groups that work together to uh, accomplish common. So it's things that, let, let's try to think of a simple word, all right, so I can understand it. So synergies are interactions of muscle groups that work together. How else can we define it? Because it's not only, because we have talked about synergies in muscle groups, right? Mm -hmm. That's a, a great example. We've done a lot of work with that. But let's even <laughs> simplify a little bit more. But I want to know what you guys, you know, so, so Gabby took a good shot at it. She said it's muscle groups linked together to solve an action or something, right? Okay, let, let's simplify that more. Because we can, we can talk about synergies and not have to talk about muscles. We can talk about body parts, right? So, again, let's, let's go take that a little bit step further. How can we talk about synergies? How do we define it? Let's say, you know, you're, I don't know, you have a little, do you have a sibling? Yeah, I do. Are they younger? No. It doesn't matter. Are they older? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I knew if they weren't younger, they're going to be older. So let's say you have to explain to them synergies for some reason, right? You have to get the concept, you're playing charades or some game like that, and you have to get the concept of synergies across them. How are you going to do it? And they're not, they're not kinesiology, are they kinesiology majors? No. Okay, then perfect. How do you describe it? Be like one functional unit composed of like many different parts. Yeah. A functional, a grouping of elements, of parts, all working together for a common good, right? So, if you really want to simplify it, like a team, right? Would that be? So it's a group of parts, a group of elements. So that can be muscles, it can be joints, body parts, and we can even talk about synergies as a group of people. Although in motor control, we normally ignore that, but all working together to accomplish a goal. You can think of it as a functional unit. I'm a starter. So this is right in the middle of a passing period going to classes, and as you can see, it's pretty busy around this time. Here, right in front of you, you're going to find the union. So basically what's happening now is we're going to go into the union, and I'm actually going into work right now. I have a, I have a shift that I'm going to go cover right now at Jamba Juice. experiments in. Um, I'm setting up SNAP right now, so I get to sort through some cards, and you get to have kids come in, and they're like from ages nine months to seven years, and you get to run the experiments with them, and then you code the data, and it's just a really good time, and you really learn about the research world, so I love it. <laughs> 